Hi everyone, my name is Vicenzo Ciorbaro and today we're going to talk about JSON additions in MariaDB, namely JSON table, which is a brand new feature in MariaDB 10.6. So before we start, a little bit about myself. I've been a software developer for the MariaDB Foundation since 2013 and I've implemented uh, quite a few features in the server such as roles, window functions um, and lots of other packaging related fixes and so on. So I have quite a bit of experience with the server code and uh, today we're going to touch up on JSON. So JSON started in uh, 10.2 when we added the first support for JSON functions and we've expanded uh, support with each release and now um, we can uh, clearly state that the JSON functionality is implemented according to the SQL standard as much as possible. Uh, JSON is stored as text in MariaDB, which makes it rather easy to work with. In fact, there is almost no difference between uh, uh, the long text column in MariaDB and the JSON column in MariaDB. Uh, the difference is that when you create a JSON column, the table actually gets a check constraint that the JSON is valid whenever you insert data into it. Uh, additionally, MariaDB has a feature called virtual columns that you can use to index data according to a sp particular expression. And in this case, you can use virtual columns to uh, index particular fields in JSON, which means that you can have your cake, uh, and in that case, holding JSON in MariaDB, and also eat it uh, with fast lookups inside uh, JSON documents. But that's not all. Uh, in 10.6, we've added the brand new feature called JSON table. And we cannot talk about JSON table unless we first start with the basis, and that is the JSON path. So JSON path is a way that we select elements from JSON. It's very similar to other path uh, defining languages, so like XPath for um, looking through XML documents. And the functionality is um, practically defined in the SQL standard of 2016, or at least that's the one we've used when we based off of our implementation. Note that there are many um, examples of JSON path on the internet, but not all of them comply to the SQL standard definition. So whenever I describe JSON path, do note that I am referring to MariaDB's implementation, which is a subset of the SQL standard. So traditionally, uh, JSON path starts with a optional mode uh, flag, which tells it which mode to compile the JSON path and use it in. Then we have a context selector called the dollar sign. Finally, the, given the context, we have an expression that specifies which elements to get from the current context. Uh, I'm going to get into more detail on each expression. We have a member selector, which is specifically done for JSON objects. And then we have an array selector, which is specifically made for JSON arrays. And finally, note that we do not support strict mode. Um, LAX allows some uh, like natural extensions and it doesn't uh, produce errors like strict would. For example, it, would, uh, it will unroll one element arrays and uh, assume them to be in a single object. Uh, in strict mode, you would get errors in this case. Now, um, let's start by looking at the member selector. So the way you do member selection is um, you start off with the JSON object, which is regularly, or actually it is defined as a set of unordered key value pairs. So here we have the employer and the title as keys and then the values are MariaDB and software developer. And I can select each value from this, from each one of those keys by using the dot notation. So current context in this case is the root of the JSON document. Uh, then we have employer, uh, dot employer. So dot employer uh, sends you to the MariaDB uh, value. The same for dot title will give you this, the software developer value. Uh, that's nice when you need to do a point lookup, uh, but then there is uh, there are situations when you actually want to get an array of all the values in that particular object. 
And you can do that with the star notation. So dot star will get you an array of all values, in this case, MariaDB, and then a software developer, which is all, all great. Now, let's have a look at one of the extensions that are, is also in MySQL. This is not specified in the standard. And that is the double star notation, which is like a, a recursive search for this particular key name. And this will return all the values of that uh, member name, regardless of where it is in the document. And this is useful because usually JSON is nest nested with values some buried somewhere deep inside the object. And this helps with um, when, whenever you need to restructure your JSON documents. If you were to use this sort of syntax, you would still work assuming the key name is still inside the object. Uh, now about enough about objects. Let's have a look, let's have a look at array selection. So JSON has arrays, and arrays are an ordered set of values, and the values can be strings, numerals, uh, other strings, or objects. But they can also be tokens, and uh, such as true or false, which are also part of the uh, JSON specification. Arrays are indexed starting from zero, so we have $0 will get you the uh, first element in the array, $3 will get you the fourth element in the array. And this is again useful for point selects, but usually we're interested in getting an array of values or a list. In that case we can get the whole list with the star notation. This is going to be very useful for JSON uh, table, which we're going to see next. Um, then there is other syntax which we do not yet support in MariaDB, but it's something on our to-do list, and if there is enough requests for this, we can also add them. Now the standard uh, specifies an alias for the last element in the array, which is last, and it also specifies a way to get a range of elements from an array, such as starting from n to m, n being a number and m being also a number. So from 0 to 2, we get the first three elements in the array. Additionally, there is the possibility of specifying a list. And the list is a set of uh, either numbers or an alias to the last or uh, a set of ranges. And they don't even have to be in the same order of the array. So you, potentially with list, you can even reorder sets or slices of the array. Uh, enough about JSON path. That's enough, all that we need to uh, work with JSON table. Uh, there is another um, clause part of the JSON path, which MariaDB doesn't support, and that is the use of filters. Uh, filters uh, significantly empower the expressivity of JSON path. We do not have it implemented yet, but that is uh, again on our to-do list. And if this is something that is highly requested, we are more than likely, more than certain to look into it. Uh, now let's start with um, JSON table syntax. So JSON table first takes a JSON document, and the second argument is a set of actually two arguments. One is a sequence selection, and one is the columns. So JSON document needs to be a valid JSON, because it's, the, it's where we extract the data to create a table. And then um, we have the sequence selection, and this the role of this parameter is to tell JSON table how do I want to use the JSON document to produce a sequence of values that I will later use to generate columns? And the columns are generated by giving them each a name, then a type. Uh, the types are part of the SQL set of types, and then the keyword path, and then a path selector. The path selector tells um, for the current column, how do I get that data? Um, well, that's a lot of explanations. Let's look at, let's have a look at it in practice. So first of all, JSON table is a table function because it returns a table, which means that it needs to be part of the from clause, and it also needs to have an alias whenever you want to refer to the table. So that's why it's mandatory to give the JSON table or a table function, any table function, a uh, table alias. And then, uh, the first parameter is going to be an array of three elements. And then we have the array selection with a star here. And then for each element, uh, so what this means is that we want to go through each element in the array and generate rows based off of it. 
And then, for each element in this sequence, compute a set of columns, just the ID column in this case, with the type of var chart 20, and the data inside the ID column is given by this path here. So I want to go to the base root of the current element. In this case, it's going to be the element A or the element B or the element C and get the base object. So as I've mentioned, so this is the JSON document, this is the sequence selection, and this is the columns. Now, here's what you get when you run this, this statement. So you get a table with three column, with three rows, uh, and they are A, B, and C. So that's pretty simple. Uh, I do want to caution that types are important. And this is something that could also happen when you're using common table expressions. Um, you must make sure that the base data types inside the expression that's going to generate the table is enough to hold all of the data. So here, if I were to do varchar of 2 instead of 20, and if I were to have elements that had maybe 3 or more uh, values in the string, then this JSON table couldn't hold the full set. So you would get data truncation. Uh, here we see we have double A, double B, and double C instead of triple A, triple B, and triple C. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Make sure that the types of the columns can fit the whatever can be inside the JSON document. You're, go you're going to get warnings if that is not the case. Uh, now, JSON itself is usually not just a single set of key values. Uh, the beauty of JSON is that it can have nested elements inside. And that's why a JSON table supports this sort of, sin of organization with um, a feature called nested path. So you can have, uh, for each element in a JSON object, you can get multiple uh, pairs of other matching elements. So let's take this example here. We have a table of uh, brands of electric cars with the brand name and then different models. And the way I want to set this up is I want to get a list of all the of each brand and all the models that it can produce, one row per each model. And I do this by first selecting the brand and I use the path based off of the uh, object array. I look for each object in the array, notice here. So each object in the array has uh, a brand and models. So for the brand column, I get brand. And then uh, I want for each element in models, get me the model uh, with a varchar 20 column and look at the current context in, in the array returned by this expression here. So the, the expression here is this array, S3XY. And I want to get the current element from that array. So that, thus we get S, 3, X, Y. Um, I think that's pretty clear. And now, the uh, nice thing about this is that we don't have to stop at one level. Usually JSON is nested in multiple levels. So we can have nested paths of nested paths and so on. So that's, uh, that's the beauty of JSON table here. Additionally, we can do sibling nested paths. Now, sibling nested paths are a bit special because there's multiple ways when you, you could actually potentially define this. Now, if we were to take just this one object here, say we have uh, the brand of Tesla with its four models, and we also have potential different colors for each model. Unfortunately, with the current implementation, we cannot get a set of each model with all its potential colors. Instead, uh, what MariaDB and also MySQL do in this case is they do a outer join like select and that we get first the list of models and the other nested paths end up being null and then we go to the, uh, the next nested path which is colors and we get the values there and the corresponding other nested paths are set to null. So unfortunately currently there is not it is not possible to do a cross join to get all the elements of brand, model, and color. So we do not have the plan clause, which is something defined in the SQL standard. Uh, let us know if this is something you're interested in. This is going to be a bit more development work compared to other features we, we want to implement. 
but if it is something that is desired we can look into implementing this one as well uh, now JSON inherently isn't uh, structured so with a specific schema so there can be errors when you're trying to parse a JSON document not that the uh, JSON document would be invalid it's just that elements might be missing or the elements values might not be what you expect so that's why you, there are fallback actions of what to do when an error occurs such as the path isn't valid or if the, if the element is empty and we can basically return a default value like null empty or any other value or we can throw an error in which case the whole select statement returns immediately because it just it means that we cannot compute the JSON table without errors the error message unfortunately I think is a little bit uh, hard to use for debugging in case there is a problem so in this case we have field color can't be set for JSON table uh, for example in the previous cars color example I had colors if I were to do a typo and say color um, then maybe this one is easy to debug but if uh, there is a specific error in just one sub object of a large JSON document this could potentially be harder to debug so we might have to introduce more specific error messages here let us know if this is a problem and we're sure to look into it and now the final nice feature about JSON table is that it can act in a lateral join sort of context but, and to explain what I mean by this we're going to take an orders table that has an ID column and a JSON doc column so the ID column has the number one and here we have a um, uh, an array of two products so let's say the a, a certain customer ordered smartphone and a power bank and another customer ordered a jacket and a tie and I want to get uh, all the products that were ordered uh, and their associated order ID and I can do this by doing a select I can get the orders ID and then I can use order items product and price which are generated via a JSON table so the JSON table notice here that it can refer to the orders table that is again in the same from clause and this is what I mean by lateral uh, join uh, the next table in the from clause depends on the previous table or tables uh, in the from clause and in this case JSON table um, gets its JSON doc value from the previous table and generates it, it a table itself and how, what do we do here? We take the uh, array of objects and we look at each object in turn. For each object, we generate a product and a price. We get the product and price according to these paths here. And if we are to run this statement, we get four rows. Uh, because for ID number one, we have, so in this case, orders JSON doc is this document here. We have two rows that match. So we have both smartphone and power bank. And for the second row, we also get two rows. Uh, for the second ID, we also get two rows, jacket and tie. Uh, next. Now, that's, that's the nice part about JSON table. Let's have a look a bit about at the internal implementation uh, so that you are aware of where things might go wrong or performance-wise. So the current implementation, because of the existing limitations of uh, not allowing uh, array indices means that we can do a single pass through the JSON document which means we're using constant memory to uh, generate the JSON table which means that um, uh, we can do this much more efficiently but we did have to remove some of the functionality if we are to add that particular functionality then in those cases you would have to use more memory so um, that's about the JSON parser part now behind the scenes for each um, JSON table we have to generate we store it uh, using the heap storage engine and as, as a temporary table that can um, can hold that uh, JSON data and because it's like a regular temporary table it means that regular optimizations such as block nested loop can work on it 
um, we do not have the possibility of generating indexes for it but it, it seems that most of the use cases do not require this at this time although we're looking for feedback here so especially because this is an we are currently as at the time of this recording at 10.6.0 which is an alpha release uh, now is the time to actually offer us some feedback and you can uh, direct development to where it is most necessary so overall uh, we have to say that MariaDB supports a subset of the SQL standard specification for JSON table and this has become available in MariaDB 10.6.0 it is not a full implementation of JSON table uh, it is however a very competitive subset it's very comparable to MySQL MySQL's version which is one of the more complete implementations of the open source databases at this point Postgres also has an implementation but um, I'm not sure if it has made it yet into a uh, database release although it's highly likely that it, this is going to happen and then uh, MySQL has the specific selector, selectors for array uh, m to n last minus n is also an addition it references the um, the position of an element starting from the end of the array uh, I have noticed that it's rather difficult to debug JSON path errors and we if they are requested we can do error message improvement and also because JSON table provides lateral derived semantics it actually is very useful in generating um, useful joinable tables uh, so that you can use use JSON data and treat it as if it were a regular uh, normalized um, structured data all right so that's all I had for you today uh, I have a, a few more minutes for questions and I'm looking forward to hearing them if there's anything in particular you'd, you'd like me to talk about I'm uh, more than happy to listen so thank you very much for paying attention and enjoy the rest of the conference.